welcome to ADTV. And today you catch up with myself and Phil Spinks back out on the bank, enjoying a short session of spring tench fishing. Now, I don't know about you, Phil, I'm sure you'll vouch for this. It is so nice to be out in a bit warmer weather. <laughs> I finally took my coat off, I think is the answer. We've been frozen all these winter filming sessions, so it's nice to go out and fish for something. And let's face it, tench is pretty much where a lot of people's campaigns start, isn't it? So that's what we're concentrating on today. And I'm gonna fire some questions at Phil and use your specimen knowledge to hopefully inspire others to get out there and give it a go. So the first thing is, Phil, we've come down to a pit today that we've done a little bit on, but let's face it, we don't know enough to say we've cracked the code. No. So what is the first thing you're looking for when you when you turn up to a venue? What spots are you trying to find? Um, the first thing I look for is that the tench will roll first thing in the morning, yeah. um, and you'd be silly to ignore where the fish are rolling. Exactly, yeah. um, once you've found the area that the fish are showing, it's finding a spot that you can present your bait onto. Um, for me, the perfect spot would be a nice gravelly area close to some weed. Right. Tench just seem to like those smooth gravel bars and that. And at the closer to the weed, it seems as if they're more confident to feed when just you're around it, weed. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure the weed holds a lot of natural food as well. Exactly. Maybe that's what pulls them in. Yeah, but. it does make very, like perfect sense that they'd be sitting there, come out, and they, I've, I always think, especially doing a bit of carp fishing, a lot of carp anglers catch tench. And as a general comparison, a lot of people fish on gravel bars, don't yeah. they? So that does make sense that potentially the areas you're finding are spot on. So let's look a little bit detail of how you're fishing and the rigs you're fishing. Now, this pit is quite unique, isn't it? Because it, what is it, 25 foot in places? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's a really, really deep, deep. deep So I guess that's why, one, you've tailored yourself to fish alarms as well, yeah. rather than float fishing, it's too deep for that. Yeah. And rig wise, what have you gone for there? I'm using the inline maggot feeders. Yeah. Um, it's quite close range stuff in here. The, the marginal shelf drops down, like you say, really so, quickly. Yeah. So we're finding some nice spots to fish on, maybe seven, eight rod lengths out. Um, I think the benefit of the inline maggot feeder over like a helicopter style setup that some people might use is if you imagine you tighten up to a helicopter rig yep. and your hook links in front of the feeder, at close range, there's a chance you're going to lift your hook link up in front yeah. of the feeder um, and the presentation isn't going to be so neat and tidy. Yeah. So by using those inline maggot feeders with a short fluorocarbon hook link behind it, it doesn't matter if the line is fairly tight to the feeder or close in, the hook links behind the feeder it, laying yeah. flat on the bottom nice and neat and tidy. Yeah, so, it does make sense, especially fishing on a slope as well. It's just, you know, you guarantee you're fishing. And they're right. nice flat feeders, so if you are fishing down on those gravelly slopes, they they're going to stay in one spot. Cool. And then I've seen you're fishing nice and accurate, aren't you? You've got your distance sticks out, you're fishing over the same spot. And then how often would you be plopping these feeders in? You fill up maggots and plopping them in regularly? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd start off putting a bit of bait in with a spawn. So yeah. it, it's like I say, it's still early spring, so the tench haven't fully woken up yet. So we're fishing for one bite at a time. Yeah. So I'll probably put four to five spawns of bait out and then recast my feeders maybe every half an hour, 45 minutes. It's, it's really dependent on the, the lake that you fish and how many fish you think you're yeah, fishing for. And, and I'm, you know, we don't really know the stock's attention. There, there, there's several rolling early in the mornings, yeah. but the first thing you've got to do is get a bite. So you're fishing for that first bite. And then build it from there. And then build the swim and put as much bait in as you think you need to hold whatever fish are there. Cool. Any particular favourite hook baits, stuff like that? I know you're, you're a big fan of plastic baits, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, the reason I quite like the plastic baits is if there are a lot of small fish in the venue, they, they're not getting um, pulled apart by roach and rudd. And yeah. you, some waters, if you put a bunch of maggots on, you'd catch a small fish yeah, in seconds. Or gone straight away, um, yeah. It doesn't seem to be many small fish in this pit where I'm getting away with fishing little bunches of maggots on like a little D-rig that I tie okay, up. Okay, yeah, I do like that little rig. So, um, yeah. And you keep that relatively short, stiff fluorocarbon. I, yeah. I keep it short and I tie it out of either an 8 or a 10 pound fluorocarbon because um, I like the stiffness. Another thing is if you're using real maggots, they have a tendency sometimes on a soft braided hook link right. to crawl back in the holes of the feeder <laughs> when they're on the bottom. So it's when the hook link's a little bit stiffer, it, it sort keeps of prevents them and keeps them in the, in the right place. Cool. And then the last thing I'm going to fire at you is probably as important as anything is how do you kick your session off? So I know first... Hello. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think it should be me that was being interviewed, <laughs> rudely interrupted halfway through asking Phil what he does, and it feels like we've got attention. I was going to say at the end there that I've also got my rods out, which I don't normally have, 
And uh, I was going to say, Phil, do you fancy a pound on it? But um, we've got time to catch up yet. So we'll see what we've got here. And then perhaps we'll sit back down again, Phil, and I'll try again. get that last little bit about baiting up sorted and hopefully finish off the interview. But let's concentrate and get this one in. Certainly a welcome surprise. Well, Phil, this is a rarity, isn't it? <laughs> me holding a new knot, but the true match angler in me has probably caught the smallest tench in the lake. But it certainly proves that Phil was right in what he was saying. I can't take much credit for it. It was Phil's rigs, it was <laughs> Phil's bait, and um, yeah, he's put me on the spot. So all good. I think it's time we slip this one back, yep. and I still need to fire you one question at you, but uh, a nice way to be interrupted yep. in an interview. <laughs> Let's get him back. Right, we're back. So, Phil, if you want to fire some questions at me, and I'll, uh, I'll carry on. <laughs> and all seriously, you know, a great start, a nice way to get interrupted. But the last thing that I was trying to get out of you, Phil, is what you do at the start of the session. So what bait you're putting in and how much you're putting in. Because let's face it, it's quite important to get that right at the start, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think one thing to remember is you can always put a bit more bait in the swim. Yeah. But if you overdo it, you can't bring it back out. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going in quite softly because it's still cold. It is, yeah. um, probably four or five spoms of bait to begin with. And then recast my feeders, say, every half an hour, 45 minutes. Um, if I had a flurry of bites and had a couple of fish and it went dead, yeah. I'd pick the spod rod up and put a few more spots few more back spot out it, yeah. and start again. It's, it's, it's gauging how many fish you think are in front of you and how much of your bait they're eating. It's yeah. something that you, you can only really learn rather right. than... You have to go and do it, don't you? you and it's, it's, it, yeah. it's different every venue you go to, but it, it wouldn't be a bad start with four or five spoms and recasting every half an hour. And, and like we said, you're fishing, first of all, for a bite. A bite yeah. And we've had, you know, that's the first There's bite. The bite. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we'll get the rods back out, a few more spods, and hopefully get another bite. Spot on. And then exactly what are you putting out in there? So traditional tench stuff, hemp, maggots? Garden. Yeah, I'm trying to keep it sound I'm trying to keep the food content quite low but the attraction quite high so because they're not feeding that hard yep. and if we were to be spotting um, bulky baits like boilies and bigger pellets and things out that when they did feed they'd fill themselves up quite quickly and, yeah. and the bite times would be shorter so we're putting hemp casters maggots small pellets and, and just trying to keep it like I say yeah keep them engrossed a bit longer and then yep. there's more of a chance they're going to pick your hook bait up well, that's hopefully exactly what is going to happen again. <laughs> and you've now got to draw level with me, Phil, because I am in the lead. And I'm going to keep reminding you that until you draw level. So I hope that's given you some confidence. I'm going to get the rods back out. Phil, I'm sure you're going to top yours up as well. And hopefully we'll be able to catch up with you again with another fish. Well, there we have it. As promised, another tench on camera, and Mr. Spinks has trumped me again with a bigger one. But we've got some time left fishing yet. We're going to sign off this episode. Hello, you're off. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, we want to put this one back in the we'll net. Put, we put this one and rest it in the net. Tench carnage, mate. <laughs> we were going to sign off this episode. Every time. Oh, I just hope it's bigger than Phil's, man. Phil's a bit bigger than the last one. We're back, 
and this time we've doubled the amount of tench. Really interrupted just at the end, but what a brilliant way to kick off and end this session with. Like I said, we are going to carry on doing a bit more fishing, but now is the perfect time for tench fishing. How nice has it been, Phil, this morning? <laughs> Have a bit of heat, and I think everyone has a soft spot for tench. So get yourself out there, catch a few tench, and of course, if you do, send us your pictures because we always like to see exactly what you're up to.